that um, he's really in touch with the lives of ordinary people. He cares very much about his constituency work. And he's got a way of approaching politics that is very practical and understands the, the things that need to be done to improve people's lives. He very much focuses on people. So I really believe that is a... But where that. would something like, for example, the so-called uh, bedroom tax fit into that, you know? taking a spare bedroom away from disabled people or whatever. Well, I don't know uh, exactly the Doesn't details of that human, because, well, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I haven't been around the last yeah. couple of years, so. No, but I mean, look, going in your book, you talk about, you know, incentives, using the benefit system, making work pay, minimum wages, and that, and that is seen to be all part of it, but it's also seen to be a lot of people as, as having quite inhuman consequences. Well, what I'm arguing in the book is actually that, that in many ways, the, the welfare system, which is the legacy of a many, many decades of, of different policies by different governments has become too bureaucratic, it's too big and is too removed from people. And so what I'm arguing if, uh, in the book about how we uh, tackle poverty and inequality and the things that the welfare system is supposed to deal with is to use a much more human approach where you work with individual people and their families to try and solve some of those very deep problems that prevent them from doing the things we want to see, like getting a job and climbing the ladder of opportunity. But I mean, it, it does just seem to me, though, that there's, there's a danger that, you know, you talk about new technologies and data and how that can make a more sensitive system. It can also make a more brutal system. I mean, that's the danger, isn't it? It can if it's in the wrong hands and in the wrong system. Yeah. And that's why I think for me a real priority of the kind of changes that we need is to actually break up these big old-fashioned systems and make things yeah. much smaller and more localised so that people yeah. can uh, deal with each other in a human way and I think that really does apply to welfare probably more than many many of the other public services. And does that mean that you also have to break up the, you know the Googles or the Apples you, know, you have to have apply antitrust principles to them because otherwise they become too powerful. Oh definitely I think antitrust is a huge part of, of this argument because just as government has got too big and bureaucratized the same has happened in business but the but the real point is not whether a company is big or uh, even whether it whether it um, faces enough competition it's about the opportunity for other companies to challenge it for new players to get into the market mm. and, and offer services and products that are better and give, give people a better deal and too many of the companies that dominate sectors like supermarkets and the utilities and the banks don't really face any challenge at all and in fact they use their insider status to keep the competitors out. Now as you freely admit you're a very well connected person now you've known, you know, we've known each other a long time but we've also, you know, you've known senior politicians and uh, you know, you know, you accept that the people who get into power tend to come from the same uh, backgrounds. You're against that, how do you change it? Well, I think a really big part of that is actually showing people that politics can be for them and encouraging people to run for office who may think the whole thing is, is a terrible yeah. thing, they don't want to get involved in, politicians speak this weird language and, and yeah. do, do all I mean, this if stuff. you take, say you're a UKIP supporter, you might think it's all a bit of a waste of time. Here we get three million votes and we get one MP. Well, I think that, um, that there's lots of arguments about, about the way that the, uh, the system works, but it's not just about Parliament, remember. You can make change happen and on the local level. We're going to be seeing, I hope, more directly elected mayors. That's another opportunity for people to get involved. There's loads of ways that people can make a difference, and I think it's really important that they see politics as something that is for them, not just for some insider elite group. And so I really yeah. want people to run for office.